Okay, what we're going to look at is what we call composition of functions. And simply put, this is an operation that uses the output from one function as the input for a second function. And that is what we refer to when we talk about composition of functions. So this is what they will look like down here. The composition of functions f and g. So we have f of g of x written two ways, and you will see them two ways. You will see them written as the f, and then that the kind of small little circle or open dot g of x, and you will also see it as f of g of x here to the right. If you were not in class, please copy this down because this will be important when you try to do your homework. And we'll talk about this more in a minute, but we must pay attention to the domains. Remember, domain is your x values. That when we finish our composition, we have to check and make sure that we, have, that we take away any domain or we have to look at domain restrictions when we look at our final answer. All right, here's a little bit of a visual what we mean by the input and the output. So here we have our F and G and here you see they're using this notation right now to find them. So to find f of g of 1, we go to g and we find 1. So over here, here's our g, here's our 1. If we input a 1, our output is a 4. Now we take that output and that becomes the input for the f of x. So if we input the f of 4, and back over here, we get back an 8. So for f of g of 1, our out final answer or final output would be the 8. We're going to take a look now at when we actually have some functions to work with. So this makes a little more sense to you. I've said it, but you might want to go ahead and write it down. We read it as f of g of x. All right, so here's our first example, and you see now that we actually have some functions that we will actually use to enter in our values. If you were not in class, make sure you pause and write this down. So what we have here is we have f of g of 4. So our initial input into our g of x is going to be 4. So we're just going to come over here and do g of 4 equals 7 minus, and in place of the x, we we'll put the 4, and 7 minus 4 is 3. Now, just like on that visual you saw before, this output now becomes the input of our f of x. So now we have our f of x, which will make f of 3. Now we bring that output as our input. So that would give us 2 to the x, or 2 to the third power. 2 to the third power would be 8. And there's your final output. So your f of g of 4 equals 8. Okay, so now we're going to reverse it. And now we're going to take g of f of 4. g of f of 4.
So we start with the F of 4. So that's going to give us 2 raised to the 4th power, which would be 16. And now this output will become the input for our G of X. So now we're going to have G of 16 equals your 7 minus 16. And 7 minus 16 would be negative 9. So your G of F of 4 equals negative 9. All right, we have another one, and what I would like for you to do, if you are not in class, I want you to pause the video, work this one out, and then turn it back on and check your work. So we're going to start with G of 3. So G of 3 would be 3 squared, or 9, and now we're going to put that into the F. So f of 9 would be 2 times 9 minus 3. 2 times 9 is 18. And 18 minus 3 would be 15. And here's your final answer. I hope you got it. So now we're going to take a look at our algebraic expressions instead of the numbers as our input. These are a little bit different, but the process is still the same. So let's take a look. So here's our first one. Our f of x is x squared minus 1, and our g of x is 1 over 1 minus x. So we're going to find f of g of x. So we're going to input the g of x into the f of x. So it's going to look like this. So our f of x is x squared minus 1. So in place of the x, we're going to put the g of x. So that would give us x over 1 minus x squared minus 1. going to maybe kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to distribute my square, so I would have x squared over the 1 minus x in parentheses squared minus our 1. So this would be the function f of g of x using your algebraic expressions. And just one last note here. I want you to take a look at your denominator. Your denominator is 1 minus x squared. And what would happen if we made x have a value of 1? If we did that, we would have 1 minus 1 squared, or 1 squared is 1, or 0. And remember, we cannot have a 0 in the denominator because we can never divide by 0. So in this case, I talked about domain, right? But your domain is going to be restricted. And we would have to say here that your domain would be all reals. But when x equals 0, okay, so we could say or restate that x cannot be equal to 0. So that's an example of how your domain can be restricted. Okay, and then the last one we're going to look at, we're going to take the same two functions, but this time we're going to do g of f of x. So our g of f of x, so instead of x, we're going to put what f of x is, so this would be x squared minus 1 over 1 minus, and again, replace your x with your f of x. 
I'm going to put this in parentheses because we would have to distribute our negative sign. And we would end up with x squared minus 1. <coughs> we can clean it up just a little bit. So we'd have x squared minus 1. If we distribute our negative sign down here, we'd have negative x squared. And down here, we would have a negative times a negative. That would give us back a positive. So we would have 1 plus 1 or 2. And we'll kind of we'll stop it at that. So let's take a quick look at the domain. We know from previously we cannot let that denominator go to zero. So what value would is there a value that we could have here that would make this go to zero? Let's try it. So I'm just going to set it equal to zero. So I would move the two over. And then we can divide that negative out of there. So we end up with an x squared equals to 2. And then to find x, we would, of course, have to take the square root of those sides. And so in order for this to go to 0, x would have to be the positive or negative square root of 2. So your domain would be restricted. Your domain could not equal that square root of 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Um, you can go back and rewatch if you need to. And this will help you with your assignment. Thank mm -hmm. you.